gentlemen, and welcome back to the movie Trivia Showdown. What an inner geekdom contest we have here today, and what an amazing announcer I have to call it with me. She's back, the one, the only, the crushable, Rachel Cushing is in the house. Hi. Rachel, the crusher Cushing, how are you? How have you spent your, uh, your off season? Um, not watching IG films over and over and over again, which I'm sure these two gentlemen spent their entire holiday doing. That's right, you probably get to expand like a romantic comedy. Or Every once a in a while, it's kind of television. I watch television now. Oh, boy. It's crazy. It you, really is. You just gave someone an idea for a brand new movie to <laughs> <laughs> division. Good we'll luck, question writers, on that one. <laughs> the inner geekdom for now. But when you look at the inner geekdom landscape, Rachel, since you joined and became a part of the Schmodown as a competitor and ultimately winning belts and representing us so well, um, you look at the class that some say you inspired, like a Brandon the Hitman Hannah or a Chandra the Chosen Don Dapani. They're competing here today. What does it mean for you to have these people kind of look at you and say, no, I want to do that when I grow up? It's so humbling and, and wonderful, and I'm so excited about this next generation. I know all eyes are on Smets and Mara for the next championship belt, but right after that, there's a whole lot of people duking it out for the next chance at the belt, starting with these two guys. And, and if we take a step back from the individual competitors, you look at their factions, because mm -hmm. it's the new era, and we have mm -hmm. management is playing a big role in the movie Trivia Schmodown. So with Brandon Hanna being managed by The Den, or Chandru being managed by Swag, they can really score a lot of points for their teams, and that's going to factor into, does that put more pressure on the competitor, do you think? It might. I think it depends on the manager. Uh, some might be crapping, cracking the whip a little more than others, but I could see both Kate and Winston being the kind of managers that will only help to make these guys better. Uh, Brandon's record is 2-1. and one. Chandru at 3-2. and two. Both of them experienced. Both of them to be feared in the inner geekdom for sure, and they had some words for each other, which you're going to see right now. What was General Grievous's ship crawling with in the opening battle of Revenge of the Sith? Buzz droids. And your winner, Chandru, the chosen Don Dapani. I think it's kind of ridiculous that he's going on to normal contenders match and I'm going home. No one's getting between me and Kalinowski, so I'll see you at my number one contender match. I'm really proud of what I've done so far. I've really, I'm really proud of what, uh, my game today. Uh, I'm holding my head high, and uh, I'm going to come back even stronger next game. Well, I already crossed Chandru's name off my list. You see, as far as I'm concerned, we're one and one against each other. I deserve a rubber match. Well, it's season seven, the new era, but I'm still playing an old uh, rival, I guess, uh, Brandon Hanna for the third time. It's cute of you to show up today, but I don't know if you've noticed, but your name is already crossed off of the Hitman's list, so you're barely a blip on our radar. Please, I took the strongest cat in the entire field, period. The chosen one. Yeah, Brandon doesn't know how hit list works. He just keeps putting my name back on there, like again and again and again. Chandru. I'm not talking to the cameras. I'm not talking to the crowd or the audience at home. I'm talking directly to you. I'm coming at you with everything that I have. I'm throwing it all at you, including the kitchen sink. Literally, I brought my kitchen sink into the studio today. I'm going to throw it at you. I'm going to expose you for the fraud that you are. Your goal this season, your biggest dream is to win that belt. Mine is to make sure that doesn't happen. Hitman? You need to go ahead and put an S in front of that dog. <laughs> That's who you is. I got a list for you, dog. The Horsemen, the Family, the Dead. All the factions you let down or got kicked out of. Swag Squad got you, drip drips. I got actually a little snack for you, some nerds. Good luck for being a nerd. And also, uh, here's a here's a dum-dum for Chandru. <laughs> We're coming for you, dum-dum. Rachel, I, I know that you're no stranger to feeling confident before a match, and you see it brimming off of the celluloid that we just ran here. Brandon Hanna, Chandra Dapani, do you see any uh, strength or weakness going against each other for either competitor? No, I only see pure hunger. 
These guys have gone at it before. They are so ready to go at it again, um, and neither one's backing down an inch. Yeah, Herder, gentlemen, <laughs> eat a Snickers. Now, let's <laughs> look at the tail of the tape here, because look, when you go to the Intergeekdom, you know that they know a lot about most of these mm -hmm. categories, particularly with Chandra Dandapani. What's he hoping to get on that wheel in round number two? You know he's gunning for MCU or DCEU. Yeah, sure. the MCU, and the, is yep. that still what we call it? Do you have any intel I don't know. I've got nothing better, though, so yeah, I think it sticks for now. <laughs> I don't think they have anything better either. So MCU and DCU. And then on the other side of the ledger, uh, I guess the, the lower ranked uh, competitor here today. Anyway, Brandon, the hitman Hannah, what's he hoping to spin? Uh, Middle Earth for sure. And I think he's pretty strong in Star Wars too. I uh, know the type. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Rachel Cushing. She's going to be calling the action with me here today. I am Mary Mark, baby carrots, Ellis. Are you ready? Ready to go. Then let's get ready to schmow down. I love a good inner geekdom crowd. Oh, me too. I really do. And I get to do the introductions. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing first, with a record of two and one, representing the Dan led to the ring by his management squadron, Kate Mulligan and Grace Hancock, it's Brandon the That's Grace. two powerful women leading him to the ring. I like it. I like it a lot. They really have gelled so well as yeah. a management firm. Yep. And you see Brandon getting a lot of cheers from the crowd. I think so. I think they're behind him. Chandra might feel like he's got the leg up having won the last time around, but Brandon's here to prove it wrong. I think if you focus grouped it, you, losing the gloves for Brandon really helped out. I have to agree. His likability yeah. factor. <laughs> and his opponent with a record of three wins. Two defeats, representing Swag, led to the ring by his manager, Winston Marshall, and Robert Butler III. It's John Drew, the Chosen Dandapane. Chandra's dancing is rubbing off on his uh, faction leader and faction oh mates. Oh my good lord, look at those moves. <laughs> he does not disappoint. I want to see these three fellows on a wedding dance. <laughs> look at the moves. Swag indeed. That's right. I can't tell, are those real headphones or are those just on the, I think it's just on the, I don't know if those are real headphones. I'm not sure what I'm seeing That's, here. Okay, oh, uh, that was a friendly handshake, uh, though. It, it, friendly enough. I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say best of friends. I would say college roommates meeting for the first time kind of handshake. Batwoman wore it better, sir. All oh, right. Winston there it Marshall is. Was I the mean, last. yeah. Parting shots for Brandon, Hannah, and Chandra Don Dondapani. Gentlemen, you are seated now for your first Inner Geekdom Contest of 2020. Unless we need to go over the rules again, that's why Rachel and I are here. In the Inner Geekdom world, you're going to hear 10 questions in round number one. These are questions asked to the field. Each question comes from a different corner of movie trivia showdown, inner geekdom know-how. Each question's worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as either myself or Rachel ask the question, you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Are my each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule at any time throughout the three round match? If you're not sure you heard a question right, you wanna buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the match. If you wish to use a challenge, look at your manager, give them the nod, they'll give us the alert and the challenge will be looked at. All right, John Drew, Brandon, how we feeling? Gentlemen, John Drew, I'll start with you. You ready to go? Uh, I did the shield pop earlier. Let's go for the one shot. <laughs> <laughs> and Brandon, your retort. I'm ready to win. Let's do this. Then it's time for the <laughs> movie <laughs> trivia showdown. I think that that confidence has boiled over <laughs> from their pre-show I can feel it emanating <laughs> off of that stage right now. <laughs> so kicking off things in round at number one, I'll be administering your first question, gentlemen. And that comes to us by the world of the MCU which stands for Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, thank I you. I really hope they already know that. That's just being true. Okay. In the film Avengers Endgame, currently on Disney+, Plus, who snaps their fingers to bring all those who were decimated by the snap back to life? All right. You seem to know it. Go to five, four, three, two, 
One pens down, going to you first, Chandru. Hulk. That uh, is correct, and Brandon Hanna. Hulk. It is Hulk. Yeah. Off to a good start. For a point apiece, and we're off and running, Rach. All right, your second question comes from the world of Star Wars. Who plays crime lord Dryden Voss in Solo? You know, I'll be totally honest. I was looking at a lot of questions, and I saw that question and the film title Solo, and I thought it was the Mario Van Peebles film. And that would really throw them for a loop if we tried that. Five, Thank you, RB3. Four, we knew you'd love that one. Three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, Brandon. That would be Paul Bettany. It is Paul Bettany. Does Chandra have it? I'm pretty sure Disney owns like 33% of him, Paul Bettany. Yes, they do, and they own 30% of all of us. Mm -hmm. We move on to the destination where Rachel Cushing has a summer home. That is Middle Earth. And your question, what is the name of the village that Bard brings Bilbo and the dwarves to in The Desolation of Smaug? Nice pronunciation. Can I ask you your favorite movie of the six? In the, the so we, we can we just discard the Hobbit movies. I like them. I don't love them. Okay. Um, the, the other three are one movie to me, uh, but if Twisted, four, I would three, say Fellowship of the Ring. Two. One, I had to give you a countdown, and I gave him yes, a countdown. I just made it. <laughs> Pens down, Chandra. What do you got? Lake Town, baby. It is Lake Town. Sunny Lake Town. Brandon Hanna. Lake Town. Yes, it is. <laughs> Tied at three apiece. They know their stuff. All right. Next up, a question from the world of DC movies. Who voices the Joker in 2017's The Lego Batman movie? Some animated films getting some love in the intergeekdom division. I like to see it. My uh, five-year-old nephew, this is his favorite movie ever. He laughs nonstop. And I can't say I blame him. No, Five, I can't either. Four. A lot of fun. Three, two, one. Pens down. Going to you, Brandon. Zach Galifianakis. It is Zach Galifianakis. Zach, Zach Galifianakis. All right. Okay. <laughs> I think Chandra might have actually spelled Galifianakis right. Well done, Impressive. Sir. Bonus points in my heart for you. <laughs> uh, we go on to Marvel movies. These are just Marvel movies. Could be any old Marvel movie. We'll see what happens. Four to four. In Early in the 2000 film X-Men, who attacks Rogue and Logan when they're on the road? That was uh, the world meeting Mr. Hugh Jackman for the first time. Right. He's given us so much since then. Since he was in a cage in Canada. <laughs> did quite a career for himself. Five, four. Three, two, one. Pens down, going to you first, Chandra. Uh, Victor Creed or Sabretooth? Yes, it is Sabretooth. Sabretooth. Brandon Hanna had it as well. There's not a lot they don't know in the proven it here today. Absolutely. Halfway through, perfect rounds for each gentleman. Should you maintain your perfect round through the end of round number one, you'll be asked a bonus question, also worth one point. Those bonus questions can make all the difference. No pressure. <laughs> this is voice of experience. <laughs> Your next question comes from the world of Harry Potter, or the Wizarding World, I believe we're now calling it. That's right. There's a lot of wizards in that world. Mm -hmm. Who played Professor Gilderoy Lockhart in the Chamber of Secrets? I have a uh, Harry Potter question for you. Oh, shoot. How did he not land Hermione? <laughs> I don't think I should answer that. Because, like, didn't they? Are they related? Five, <laughs> four, three. Is it a Luke and Leia thing, too? <laughs> <laughs> Pens down. Uh, we're going to you gap. first, Brandon. Kenneth Branagh. That is correct, John Drew. Kenneth Branagh. All right. Nicely done. <laughs> Sorry to any uh, Weasleys I might have offended. I'm just wondering <laughs> why Harry seemed to have it. All right. Oh, now your question makes way more sense. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Professor Gilderoy Lockhart, Lockhart landing Hermione. <laughs> and that is a whole so problematic thing. Like, no, no. <laughs> Harry and Hermione is a much better question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're yeah. good. <laughs> we're good, Ellis. <laughs> Professor Gilderoy, you keep your nose clean or exactly. else you're going to become a hashtag, sir. Um, <laughs> oh. Oh. We move on to Star Trek, getting us out of the very yep. dirty wizarding world <laughs> and into Star Trek. Your question, Star Trek Generations brought together what two popular captains? Do you prefer the old school Star Trek movies to the Next Generation movies to the J.J. Abrams? You're setting film. me up for internet hey because I, I like the J.J. ones. Is that bad? No, uh, not at four. all. Three, well, maybe a two. Bit. The crowd is whispering amongst <laughs> themselves. That's never good. Pens down. We are going to you first, Chandru. Kirk and Picard. Yes, it is. Brandon Hanna. Kirk and Picard. All right. Nice. Three questions separate both these gentlemen from a perfect, perfect round. Rounds. Well done, guys. Question number eight comes from the DCEU, until we mm -hmm. find something better to call it. <laughs> Who directed Shazam? 
They have not hesitated once when writing down their answers. It's very impressive to no, see. No, I mean, at this point, they seem flat out bored. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, bring up the energy. I hope, hope you guys are still having fun out there. Five, <laughs> I mean, I still four, like the mag almost three. magical Me Too that happened to <laughs> Kenneth <laughs> Hanna. Right. Pens down, we're going to you, Brandon Hanna. Who do you got? David F. Sandberg. I even got the middle initial. Does Chandra have it? I got the middle initial. He got the middle <laughs> initial, <laughs> too. You can't get anything past these two. Yep. All right. Try this one on for size. Your penultimate question in round number one comes from the category of heroes and villains. The query is, who played Hellboy's girlfriend, Liz Sherman, in the Del Toro Hellboy films? Uh, so I got a Hellboy comic as a gift for Christmas one year Aww. because it features Goatman. You know who Goatman is? I am aware. It's like this East Coast legend. <laughs> Goatman could exist. Five, four, New Jersey, Maryland's what we're looking at. Three, two, one. Pens down, going to you, Chandru. Selma Blair? It is. In fact, Selma Blair, does Brandon have it? Couldn't pull it. He oh. didn't pull it. Finally, one of them is cut. He blinked, it's okay, you'll get but it's only one. one point. It's only one point. That does mm -hmm. cost him his perfect round. Chandru mm -hmm. still has the opportunity for mm -hmm. perfect round. If he gets this next question right, what category are they looking at, Rach? We're looking at the wide world of the mixed bag. <laughs> Anything goes there. here. What is the name of Kate, or excuse me, what is the first name of Kate Capshaw's character in Temple of Doom? That would be Indiana Jones. That would be. And you said anything goes maybe as a... Oh, uh, anything goes. I, 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 you just can't, you can't <laughs> refrain from it. it, it it's it's all good. still in I, there somewhere. <laughs> Three, two, one. Pens down, Brandon Hanna. That would be Willie. It, it is Willie. Be. Willie. And Chandru there has it, it too. There it is. All right, and hats off to Brandon Hanna, 9 out of 10 it's is a really great uh, round. heck of a score. But Chandra the Chosen wait, 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 with a perfect Sorry. perfect <laughs> round number one, even surprising his management squad. Uh, Chandra, you do get a bonus question mm -hmm. that is asked just to you. You don't need to write it down. Just give us an answer within 15 seconds. That bonus question is, who played Johnny Blaze's girlfriend, Roxanne Simpson, in Ghost Rider? Eva Mendez. It is now 11 to 9, Chandru, and the Den is welcome after a very impressive perfect round. Yep. Rachel, as somebody who scored a few perfect rounds in their day, how does it feel going into round number two? What kind of a confidence boost is that? I've always said with every correct answer you get, the more confident you feel. So if you get that many correct and the bonus, you just feel like you can answer anything. And especially if you haven't missed yet, it's really tough for your opponent to look and just, I, I'm waiting for this person to blink. And yep. for Chandru Dhanapani, he has not done so yet. As we enter into round number two, this is the wheel round because this is the inner geekdom division and it is a a singles inner geek to match each competitor gets to spin at the wheel you're gonna hear five questions once you settle on a wedge each question is worth two points there's no penalty for missing a question however stealing is available in round number two so if you're not sure of the answer ask us for multiple choice we'll give you four options one of which is the correct answer at that point the value of the question goes down to one so Chandru uh, you're three and two currently in the league against Brandon Hanna's two and one record that's why you're sitting in the higher ranked chair and you also have a two-point lead so would you like to spin the wheel first or would you like to defer to your opponent? Well, it's the new era, let's do something new. I'll spin first. He's gonna spin yeah. first, and how about a huge hand for our, sh our Schmodown patrons sponsoring the wheel. The sponsored wheel is Star Wars. There it is. If John Drew or Brandon land on Star Wars, we are gonna reveal the name the of that patron sponsor. dancing just keeps coming. Yeah, that dance just does not stop. Nope, uh, but the wheel is about to. Round and round it goes. It doesn't look like it's going to be Star Wars. It could be Star Trek. Interesting. All right. Got and some conferring here. He's, he's going gonna to go keep it. for it. All right. Star Trek. All right. Chandru, uh, I will be administering you your Star Trek questions. Kate's going to be asking Brandon his series of questions. Five queries for a possible 10 points in the world of Star Trek. Like I said, stealing is available, however. Uh, your first question. Which Starfleet Admiral gives Kirk permission to take command of the Enterprise at the beginning of Star Trek, the motion picture. Admiral Nogura. Ladies and gentlemen, he's got two points <laughs> in round number two. It's a good deep cut. All right, we move on to your next question. In Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, the Enterprise hides in a nebula to avoid the Reliant. Name the nebula. Uh, Mutara Nebula. I, how do we get the... Yes, it's two <laughs> points. Very 
Very impressive. Mm -hmm. And Chandra opens up a six-point lead over Brandon Hanna with three questions remaining in the world of Star Trek. Uh, Chandru, in Star Trek Nemesis, Riker and Troy are off to be tased. Beta Z. Beta Z. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, I don't know. I'm keeping it in the cut. <laughs> They're off to Beta Z to get married in a ceremony where there will be no speeches and no what? No clothes. It's a naked <laughs> wedding, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> wow. You can get be tased in beta Z. <laughs> <laughs> no clothes at the wedding. All right. Sounds like Josh McCougar's wedding. We have two more <laughs> questions remaining. Uh, Chandra, your penultimate question in the world of Star Trek. In Star Trek First Contact, what year did Zephyrin Cochran make his historic space flight? Digging deep. 2063. That is correct. We got two it. points. Um, it is 19 to 9, and regardless of what happens on this last question, Brandon Hanna knows he's got a tall order matching the point total. Maybe he gets lucky with his steal here. That could be much needed. Chandra, your last question in the world of Star Trek movies. After Nero's attack on the Federation fleet in Star Trek 2009, Starfleet orders everyone to rendezvous in what system? Go to five. Multiple choice. Four. I can provide that. Is it A, the Briar system, B, the Laurentian system, C, the Ilenium system, or D, the Viridian system? Can I give the options again? I can give you the options one more time without use of a JT rule. Is it A, the Briar system, B, the Laurentian system, C, the Ilenium system, or D, the Viridian system? Be the Laurentian system. One point for Chandru. Oh. And I mean, I guess that kind of proves he's mortal somewhat because. Maybe just a tiny bit. He needed multiple choice, but he still has a 20 to 9 lead over Brandon Hanna. So, Brandon, <laughs> it's now your spin, sir. Step up to the wheel, spin what you like. Five questions are going to be lurking. You got this. This is part of the game, gamesmanship. Chandra going first and putting himself with that much of a lead puts pressure on Brandon, so I, we'll see how he handles it. I how confident it. you are. Even if you are Rachel Cushing, <laughs> you are looking at that scoreboard and you're saying, man, I got a lot of ground to make yep. up. But he can do it. He absolutely can do it. Round and round it goes, and it's past opponent's choice. That's the good news. And it has landed on DCEU movies, and Brandon's wow, going to take no it. Wow, no hesitation. <laughs> All right. Brandon, your question is going to be administered by Rachel Cushing. All right, Brandon, your first question. By now, everyone knows that kal mother adopted mother's name is Martha. But what is his Kryptonian birth mother's name? Somebody had fun writing that one. <laughs> you looking for the full name? Uh, we just need the first name. Lara. That is correct. Well done. <laughs> Question number two. In Wonder Woman, what is the name of Steve Trevor's Native American ally that joins up with Steve and Diana? Chief. Correct. Yes, it is. <laughs> He's doing his job so far, Ray. Absolutely. Question number three. What toy is young Thaddeus playing with in the back of the car at the beginning of Shazam? A magic eight ball. I like his confidence. Yes, Another it is. correct answer. No ask again later here. Nope. Number four. In Aquaman, who played the ancient Atlantean king, King Atlan? Multiple choice. Is it A, Dolph Lundgren, B, Graham McTavish, C, Jean-Claude Van Damme, or D, Willem Dafoe? B. That is correct. All right. <laughs> Selfishly, I was hoping it was Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> All right, this is your last question, Brandon, to pull within two points of Chandru. What brand of sports car does Bruce Wayne drive when he picks up Barry Allen in Justice League? Five. I'm gonna go multiple choice. All right, is it A, Porsche, B, Mercedes-Benz, C, BMW, or D, Lamborghini? I'm going to go Lamborghini. That is inc incorrect. Can you steal, Chandru? Uh, 
for your, your options, options again? Options again. Is it A, Porsche, B, Mercedes-Benz, C, BMW, or D, Lamborghini? Mercedes-Benz. That is correct for a one-point steal. It's a big yes. steal that there, is. Rachel. Yeah. Closing out the round, Brandon Hanna is starting out very strong with the mm -hmm. DCEU. Really Slipped good. a little there towards the end, losing that steal to Chandra. It only cost him a two-point swing. Mm -hmm. He didn't get the point. Chandra did get the point. But now it's a five-point lead that Chandra has going into round number three. Yeah, that, that can seem pretty scary, especially with the way that Chandra's playing. But round three has taken down many a competitor in the showdown. So I don't think Brandon's quite out of it yet. And much like a great comic book movie, a lot of twists and turns oh, in yeah. the third act. As I read the rules of play for round number three, gentlemen, you're each going to give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each of you. These numbers can range from 1 to 15. Each number corresponds to a different corner of movie, trivia, schmodown, inner geekdom know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one is worth five points. Chandru, you are the higher-ranked opponent currently, and you find yourself with a five-point advantage. So I'm going to get your numbers first from 1 to 15. What feels lucky, sir? Oh, I'm a big fan of Lost, so 4, 8, 15. 4, 8, 15. Thank Appropriately you. geeky numbers. That's right. Some lost fans in the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon Hanna. Let's do this again. 5, 9, and 16. Five, 1 to 15, Brandon. 9, and uh, you can't do oh. 16. Only through 15. 14. 14, okay. All right, Brandon, I'm going to be asking you your questions. Uh, Chandra, Rachel's going to be asking you yours. So, Brandon, we're going to start with you. Um, see if you can uh, pull even or ahead of Chandru with your first couple. Uh, you selected number five for your two-point question, and that corresponds to scores and soundtracks, everyone's favorite category. Mm -hmm. I like it. I for like two it. points, who composed the scores for all six Middle Earth-based films? Howard Shore. That's two points. Nice and he's pulled it within three. He can tie Chandra if he gets this next question correct, and you selected number nine for three points in the world of Marvel films. Question is, who plays Negasonic Teenage Warhead in Deadpool and Deadpool 2? It's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> Five, four, three, two. I don't know it. One. <laughs> Looking for Brianna Hildebrand. Brianna Hildebrand. And now we come to the moment where yep. we could have a technical knockout by Chandru. However, Brandon has something to say about that because he has his five-point question remaining. He selected number 14. And your five-point question, Branda, is in a galaxy far, far away, Star Wars. And your question for five points. In episode one, what is the call sign of the leader of the Naboo Starfighter Squadron? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. I can do that. In episode one, The Phantom Menace, what is the call sign of the leader of the Naboo Starfighter Squadron? I believe he has two JT rules. He does. Buy himself some more time if he can pull that. It's been done. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Okay, you have one more JTE rule. In episode one, The Phantom Menace, what is the call sign of the leader of the Naboo Starfighter Squadron? Four, three. Repeat the question. Last one. Here we go. In episode one, The Phantom Menace, what is the call sign of the leader of the Naboo Starfighter Squadron? Five, four, three, two. Yellow leader. And your winner! By way of technical knockout, Chandru, the chosen Don Dapani. It was Bravo Leader. Bravo Leader.
very yeah, tough five point question. It was. It was deep in the world of Star Wars canon. Uh, John and Brandon sharing a nice hug and handshake there. Uh, Brandon is no slouch at inner geekdom, and he's going to be a threat for a long time. But Chandra Donapani, that's the story today. Right 100%. That is a message. That is a message to Kevin and to Mara and to anybody else who is just joining the IG League that uh, they're going to have to go through him to get to the top. Uh, that was pretty impressive. It's a statement victory yeah. for the Chosen, maybe earning his nickname, the Chosen. I think it's, it's an IG-appropriate name, and today he lived up to it. And, you know, I, I think the only, the only thing, it's not really a discredit to him, but we didn't see how he would have performed in round number three because he didn't have to. It's true. I mean, a TKO win is always good for the ego, but you didn't get to flex the muscles. You didn't get to get those practice uh, questions in, so we'll see how he fares next time. But he took the bull by the horns. He was leading from the get-go. He didn't get a single question wrong, including the steal opportunity that he had. Um, so it's... Uh it's going to be hard to, to beat him. And I know that Brandon is probably kicking himself right now, as we all do after losses like that. But it just just goes to show you what kind of knowledge you have to have to play in this league. And I think he'll uh, get back to the books. Well, you talk about uh, Chandru flexing his inner geekdom muscles. I know that uh, Team Swag is a fan of that kind of showmanship. <laughs> and our own Jen Sturger is going to have an interview both with Chandru and his manager, Winston Marshall. Jen, I imagine it's somewhat of a jovial, uh, we just defeated the Empire for the second time on the Forest Moon of Endor vibe. That's right, Mark. I just got him to stop doing the Fortnite dance back here, okay? <laughs> Chandra, that was an absolutely dominant performance. Does this finally put a nail in this war with Brandon Hanna? I hope it does. He needs to, like, find opponents that he can actually win against, and uh, we'll just uh, call the rivalry done for now. It's, um, it was one and one, and uh, it's two and one. Like, I'm, I'm going on to the bigger, bigger players. Yes, and we need lessons on what a face talks like. Um, <laughs> anyways, this has got to be a great. This has got to be a great, a great victory for Swag. You guys get four points in this. How are you feeling after this performance? I mean, that's huge. I mean, obviously, you had New York and uh, Finstock started running off with it. the Den has had some incredible matches, so we really needed this. And and my boy is an elite player here. Honestly, he really is. I'm really proud of him. Uh, and that's the point. I'm gonna tell everybody in the geekdom, we're coming for you. All right, we really are. Like, I'm looking at you, Ko. I'm looking at you, Kalinowski, and when we're done with you, we're going on to Smets, baby. Going on to Smets. Uh, <laughs> KO, corruption, whatever. You know what I meant. Hush. So my point is, I'm proud of you, boy. Let's keep going. Yeah. This guy is someone to look out for. I'm telling y'all right now. Do you feel like, with all of those names that are looming large out there, like the big three, there's Mike Kalinowski, obviously Kevin Smets, our current champion, and then Mara Kanopic, which is kind of like this, we don't know what she's, like, we don't know what she's capable of right now. Do you know what I mean? Like, she's still kind of an unknown in regards to how will she come back after such a long hiatus, you know? I, I think the big thing, and we're very aware of this, and I've seen it myself having competed before and stuff like that, you don't take anybody for granted at all. Uh, Mara, obviously, she's a former champion. That's huge. Uh, Robert Parker coming out of the fan league is someone you don't want to sleep on. Obviously, Smets has the belt. Kalinowski has had the belt. But I'm telling you, this boy right here is ready. He, he is the one that has been helping me coach everybody on the faction because his study his studying is incredible. It's at the top tier of that, so we're ready for it. No matter who it is, we're ready. Congratulations on your huge uh, victory today. Yeah, thank you. I, I just wanted to add one more thing. Uh, having Winston back uh, was really helpful. Like I un finally understand the value of the manager firsthand. Um, yeah, it's yeah. cool to not have to do this whole thing on your own, right? Exactly. Like it's, uh, someone to have your back and like faction mates to have your have your back has been a great strength. And uh, the Facebook group Drew Crew has been like helping me train as well. And uh, I couldn't have done it without all of. It. Okay, it's sounding like an Oscars acceptance speech right now. Playing <laughs> you off. My, Anyways. My, uh, <laughs> yeah. Only my. The only thing was, uh, I didn't care about winning or losing, I just didn't want to miss any question. Uh, uh, that's what happened today, and like, I'm like really happy about that. Congratulations again, congratulations to Swag. Swag Squad, drip drip baby. You didn't have the mic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Rachel, uh, <laughs> one kind of looks at this and you do realize that that was a huge win for Team Swag yep. because stealing all those points from the Den, who had such a nice run in New York and has had a nice early part of the season, yeah. that's a big win in the grand scheme of things. Definitely. In this era of factions, it's about, you know, your points being scored by your um, competitors. And I'm sure, as it was very clear, Winston was really excited about that. And it 
sounds like Chandru's really stepping up as a, in a leadership role within the faction, helping people study. That is a huge component of playing in the Schmodowns, particularly the Inner Geekdom, but in uh, the all the leagues. So um, it feels like Chandru and Winston are a uh, match made in heaven. And with that interview, one could say the most modest way possible. That was confident. I'd just say outright cocky. I, I'm, I'm uh, there. There might be some what is some Anakin Skywalker vibes creeping <laughs> into this face here. I don't know, but he came out swinging, and um, it sounds like he's. Uh, aiming for Mike Kalinowski, so keep swinging. Team Swag does not like sand. It's rough, it's coarse, <laughs> it gets everywhere. And now we go to Brandon, Hannah, and the Den, who are joined by Jen Sturger. Jen, I imagine it's somewhat of a sullen mood over there right now. Yeah, it's definitely a different vibe than I was just experiencing. Hannah, I saw you beating yourself up backstage. You were saying, I knew those answers. I just didn't pull them. What was happening out there? Was it the lights? What was it? Was the pressure of like just this match and this beef you have with Chandru, or what's going on? Well, I mean, anytime you go against Chandru, it's going to be tough. The guy's good. He played a perfect game. Um, I missed three questions. It was three questions I just didn't know the answers to. It sucks to lose on a Star Wars five-pointer again. Um, but I mean, yeah, I came into this match more prepared than I've ever felt for any match. It just ultimately came down to some bad luck and uh, I had to go perfect to beat him and I didn't. And that's what happens when you're at this level. So. I saw these two ladies absolutely rallying around you though. You can tell that they just are very supportive of, of everything that you're doing and you're studying and whatnot. Mom, you got any words? Yeah, honestly, we're just, uh, I think we're the most upset that uh, Chandra didn't invite us to his pajama party. Because I bet that's going to be a real fun time. He just seems like a real fun guy. Uh. And on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, Grace, do you have any words? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Brandon's great people. We're really proud of what he did. You know, the thing that you can learn sometimes is really specific gaps in your knowledge, which may have happened today. Um, and again, Chandru, like, I'm really proud that he brought his sleep over to school today. It's really quite, like sweet and cute. And I love him talking big game when he's technically only ever won one more time over Brandon than he has the other way around. So it's like, calm down, buddy. Oh, so where do we go from here? How do we pick ourselves back up? How do we start over? You know, where do you want to go next in Inner Geekdom? Uh, I just want to keep competing at an elite level and I work, want to work my way back up to the top. I can guarantee whoever I play next is in for a really bad day because I'm not going to miss. And I mean, that's just what it boils down to. And uh, I just want to thank uh, my best buzz Fred, Thread and the arsonist back home for helping me prep for this match and a few other people. Um, it was it was a lot of work to, to get here and I'll find my way back. Um, me and Chandru, we're a dyad in the force. We're destined to do this forever. So uh, I'll be back and he knows it and he should be scared. Oh God, I hope not. I'll pray for you. Anyways, back to the desk. Uh, you know, Rachel, Brandon may have come out on the short side of the stick today, but he definitely has that champion's mentality where he, he feels sorry for the next person he has to face. When you look down that road, Brandon and Chandru, maybe Chandru going in one direction. I see Brandon rebounding pretty quickly. Absolutely. Yeah, clearly, this rivalry is just getting started. Uh, neither one's ready to uh, to back down, and Brandon's got some work to do, but he seems willing to do that work. Um, I think Grace is right on. I think a match like this shows you where your gaps are, and he's 100% aware of them. We'll work on them. He will be back, and we've seen it so many times. Roka's done it. Mike's done it. Kevin's done it. I did it. You bounce back, and you bounce back stronger than you ever were before. That's right. Well, one wears pajamas, one wears a suit, <laughs> uh, one describes it as a diet in the force. I simply say it's the best of both worlds. That is Rachel the Crusher Cushing. Thank you so much for joining us on the desk today. We're going to see you soon around the movie trivia Schmodown, right? I'm here. I'm not going far. I love calling uh, matches. I love being on the desk with you. I love not having to compete and go through what those guys just went through. So <laughs> I was going to say we should clarify on this side of the desk. Yes, I'm good here. <laughs> I am Baby Carrots. You know, I'll be around here, and you guys can check out all upcoming live events at the schmodownlive.com. Grab your tickets right now. Pick those tickets up before they sell out. On behalf of Rachel and Christian Harloff and all of our great movie trivia Schmodown patrons, I am Mark Baby Carrot Sellis, and we'll see you next time on the movie trivia Schmodown. Woo!